Greetings, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly Sunday School lesson, Kingdom Lives Matter. If you're watching us on television station GRTV, I say thank you. Uh, if you're tuning in to our YouTube channel and this is your first time, I say welcome to you. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. We certainly appreciate your support. If you would, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way you'll know when I upload a new fresh video every week. Uh, it is really a great help if you share a link to your uh, social media page. Just hit the share button, and this way you can help me to share the Word of God. Now, today's lesson is another great example that Jesus teaches on how to pray. Uh, one of the things that I've learned from studying this, and I've learned not only from studying these, these lessons recently, but just through life, that we have to continue with fervent prayer, just as Jesus gave as an example. According to Luke's gospel, Jesus was a man of prayer. In fact, in fact, Luke records 21 instances of Jesus praying. I mean, it really amazes me when I think about this. I say, God the Son, here he is praying to God the Father. God the Son, who was part of the creation, who was part of the creation, uh, part of making the universe is praying to God the Son, in effect, himself. I mean, this is, blows my mind. In, in Luke 5, 16, uh, he records, Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. In Luke 6, 12, he records, Jesus went out into the mountain and prayed and continued all night in prayer to God. Now, here's my question. Who does this? When was the last time that you isolated yourself? You went off by yourself and prayed all night. Wow. Wow. Now, even, even in the Old Testament, prayer was critical in addressing God. When the children of Israel were slaves, God responded. Mm. Exodus 2, verses 23-24, the people were very uh, distraught. <laughs> Pharaoh was putting them through it, right? And this is what it says. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Wow. Mm. God hears our groaning. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know about you, but there's times in my life where words weren't enough. There's times in my life where the circumstance, the situation going on in my life, some I brought on myself, Woo! Some, some that came to me blindsided, you know, some came over time, but it was times when the pressure was so hard in my life, all I could do was get on my knees and groan, you know, like, oh Lord, please help me, please, please, just begging and begging for help for God to give me some kind of relief. Mm. Daniel, in Daniel 9, 19, it says, Oh Lord, hear. <laughs> oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. Oh my God. Wow. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Mm. So when we are in a desperate situation, I hear the prayers of the scripture saying to pray even harder and with more conviction. Wow. For some reason, I, I, I feel like it's more effective when our prayers are coming from the heart and they're coming from such pain and genuineness that God just reacts. He moves. And he says, okay, David, I got you, David. I remember, David. I remember what I promised your forefathers. I got you. I know you represent me, David. I got you. And that's what I hear God is telling us in this lesson. He said, I got you. <laughs> now, just before this lesson starts out, Jesus has done many miracles. He's cast out demons. Uh, he's done a resurrection, a healing, sending of the 12, the transfiguration, sending of the 72, calming the storm, which led to one of the disciples asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. 
Wow. Mm. Now, brothers and sisters, it was pretty typical in that day where rabbis would uh, recite prayers and teach their disciples, their followers, how to pray. So Jesus recites the Lord's Prayer. And listen to what comes next. Now, I'm reading out of the NIV version here. Uh, this is the uh, standard lesson. I'm using the standard lesson today. The NIV out of the standard lesson commentary. Uh, these folks do a wonderful job. So I'm going to read their version out of the NIV. This is Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Wow, that's a pretty nice friend. So I say unto you, this is Jesus now, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? <laughs> Not me. I ain't giving my son no snake. <laughs> or if he asks for her egg, will give him a scorpion? No, sir. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, mm, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our key verse is verse uh, 9, here, chapter 11, verse 9. I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Now, there's an acronym that one of the pastors here in town, Pastor Leonard Gant, uh, told me. It's A-S-K, ask, right? The A stands for ask. S stands for seek. You got it. And K stands for, you know what it is, knock. A ask, A-S-K. Now, what I did is I took a couple of uh, what I would call key notes for your students. I outlined a couple things that I want to highlight to you, uh, key notes that I, um, this, and this is not going to be in no particular order, but it's just key nuggets that I think you want to get for your students, okay, that you want to share with them. Now, uh, God is more than a friend. Who would agree with that? God is more than a friend. God is ready and deserves to give to us freely. One of the most precious gifts that God has given us is the Holy Spirit. Now in the Old Testament, they had the Holy Spirit, but he would come and leave, come and go, come and go. And now, thanks be to Jesus, thanks be to God's plan, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is within us. We've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And amen, hallelujah, been filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, somebody. Now Luke records that, I told you this already, that Jesus uh, records Jesus teaching on prayer 21 times. Now there are two persistent prayers, persistent prayers. Uh, in this lesson, where the man is praying, he's like, I need some food for this man that's come knocked on my door. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? He asks, he seats, and he knocks, right? The other, the second persistent prayer is the woman with the blood, right? The woman with the issue of blood. Now, God answers sometimes. Sometimes God answers even before you ask, right? Then there's times that God answers while you're praying, while you're asking. Mm. And then there's times where the answer is delayed. Now, there's an emergency prayer in the New Testament. Remember when uh, in Acts, while they were praying, remember they was praying for uh, Peter? 
and then they, they were praying, man. They were going in on some prayer, right? And then next day you know, uh, the church was praying. Next day you know, Peter was knocking on the door. <laughs> that was an emergency prayer. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I know what emergency prayer is. <laughs> you know, emergency prayer is when, uh, when the gas company is coming out to shut the gas off. And you got kids in the house and you can't make it payment. And they told you, they tell you, well, today is the day. They can come out. Maybe, usually they come out around 5, 6 o'clock. It could be earlier. It could be a little bit later. And you're praying, oh, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. <laughs> and then God responds. Boom. There's a knock at the door. There's a knock at the door and it's the UPS or FedEx bringing you an overnight delivery and it's a check in the mail and just enough to cover your gas bill. Say, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know about emergency prayers. And I know you do, too. Hallelujah, because that's how God works. Right. He responds to our needs. He supplies our needs. Hallelujah. Now, in this lesson. You got friend B, right? Friend A, he's the one asking, seeking, knocking. Friend B is the one that's in the house chilling at midnight, right? Now, I've had people come to my house at midnight and I have helped people. My goodness, I don't want to go into no long stories, but I could tell you, I have some people, some crazy stuff going on, people knocking on my door at midnight. I go down there to the door and I got, you know, I got one of my buddies with me. I'm like, hey, 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 you know, a little nervous. Like, who's knocking on the door this time of night? You know what I mean? But so now in this time, this you got to imagine in Palestine at this time, these homes were normally a one bedroom house. A one room house, kind of like a shotgun house they used to have down south. Y'all remember them shotgun houses? You had a door, a front door and a back door, and you could just see right through the whole house all the way to the back door. It wasn't no whole house. Probably had a front room and a back room. The kitchen was off in the back room or somewhere, right? Okay, this is how this was. One room house. So he's got kids in the house. It's midnight. There ain't no street lights. So there's no light shining in. It's completely dark. And here comes this voice that he obviously recognized. He's like, friend, 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 friend. I got kids in here. You know, you go to turn on the lamp, you go start rummaging to get some bread, you know you're going to wake some folks up, right? So it was a bit of an inconvenience to get things moving. Now, I got a note here that came to me today. It said, God made us, Christ bought us back, and sent the Holy Spirit to live within us. Mm. Persistence, persistence, persistence. It's an idea. I took this out of uh, the notes of the Schofield Bible, I believe. Persistence, an idea of urgency. It's an audacity. Persistence, an audacity. Like, I got to get this. This is something I got to have. Earnestly, genuinely, right? Boldness, relentlessly. It's like that of a desperate beggar. Have you ever been on the streets, brothers and sisters, or been anywhere, you know, going into the grocery store, convenience store, just anywhere, and somebody's asking for money, right? Now they got this, looks like it's almost organized. You're driving on the street, about to get on the highway, you always got these people with these signs. This is some desperate begging, right? These people are consistent and persistent in asking, and obviously they must be getting something because they're constantly doing it. I want to suggest that we remember to go to God for all of our needs. Mm. I, I, and you know what? You know, I, when Pastor Bishop Thomas was here, we were talking about this whole Google business. <laughs> we call him Mr. Google. You know, I'm just going to be flat out with you. This morning I had to get in the car and, and I had overlooked that I needed some gas for a little while. My car had been telling me that I needed some gas. But this time when I got in, it says zero miles. It said bing, 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 and it said zero miles, right? Now, typically, I don't pray this prayer. Typically, I get in my car and there's gas. You know, my granddad said, always keep it on half or more. That way your car runs better. So for some reason this morning, it was, I know the reason. <laughs> this, this morning, it was on zero miles to go. I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> it's telling me you got no more miles, buddy. Guess what I started doing? I started praying. It wasn't no, Mr. Google, where's the directions? Where do I have to go? It was, Lord, would you help me get to where I need to go? Right? And this is what I'm trying to say. We need to start relying on God more. Stop 
asking Google for all these questions that to our lives and ask God, our creator, uh, to supply our needs, to give us directions in our lives, to show us which way to avoid, which way has less busy traffic things that's going to hinder us in our way. And ask God to show us the way that he wants us to go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What, who God is, what God does, and what God gives. This is, the, this is the, one of the formats to prayer, right? Who God is, acknowledging him for who he is, acknowledge him for what he does, and then acknowledge him for what he gives us. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, now in this lesson, in this lesson, we are called to be persistent. But there's also a calling to give. There's also a calling to give. Now, verses five and six, verses five and six. Let's take a look at that really quick. Let's keep it moving. I'm going to get done here soon. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. Now, it's very likely that these two were good friends uh, and they were good neighbors, right? They probably borrowed something previously. You know, and, and don't forget, there were no street lights, so you would have to, they would have been in the very, very darkness, and most folks would have been in a deep sleep at midnight. Now, I know in my neighborhood, I try to have a good relationship with my neighbors. I've had neighbors where they have my house keys, and I've had their house keys, and I've been able to go in their garage and get tools and vice versa. And brothers and sisters, I think it's very important to know your neighbors. I mean, more than just one of them high by, you know, and you wave. You know, some people live in them waving neighborhood. You drive, they just wave. They don't even know the people's name. They've been seeing them for three years, don't know their name, don't know their kids, they just wave, just waving, okay? I believe that we got to get more acquainted with our neighbors. I mean, how else are you gonna share the gospel? Now, unlike today's society, where if someone unexpected knocked and came at the door, right? Like I was telling you earlier, it would cause a reason for caution, right? Uh, the ancient society folks were more used to visitors, accustomed to visitors looking out for them and giving them help even late at night. I remember my mom, them, my grandparents were telling me, you know, that's kind of how it was in the 40s, 50s, and, and before you'd be up north, or even in the south, I'm sure this happened, but I heard more about it north. You'd be up north, and then you'd get a knock at the door, and somebody had just got off the bus. Somebody just got off the train and came from south, and they don't know anybody. But the family could relate to that journey, wanting to leave the south and come to the north for a better opportunity, and so they'll take them in day or night, and they'll feed them and, and give them a room or a spot to lay their head for a while and help them out with jobs and all that was going on back then. Okay, this is what was happening here. They were accustomed to helping people. They were travelers, you know what I'm saying? And you know, all the time they weren't hotels everywhere you go and people didn't have money stacked in their pockets, credit cards, you know what I'm saying? So people help people. Uh, you gotta remember, remember the two angels appeared in Sodom, right? They first were with Abraham uh, at the tent, then they went on to Sodom. And what happened? The man took them in, remember that? Those two angels in Sodom, the man took them in. This was a custom of ancient times. But since, since the family did not have food to prepare for the traveler, it would have been his responsibility to make it happen. You know, you knock on my door, you looking for help. If I ain't got it, I can't just say, no, I ain't got it, boom, shut my door. No, it's my responsibility to help my fellow man out. So let me go, you know what? I know Annie next door, Annie be cooking up some stuff. They're always smelling good over there. Let me knock on her door and see if they got some bread for you, brother. Hold on. Good, good, amen. Verse seven, and suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children are in bed, and I can't get up and give you anything. Now suppose God says that's how he answers. The reply of the proposed lender is very shocking to me, and no doubt to the disciples, right? Even though it's midnight, and it's an inconvenience, you know, inconvenience to get up, and the fact that friend A is asking at this time of night gives the situation even more urgency. Here's my question, brothers and sisters. 
what would you have done? Hello, hello. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, I know it's late, but I just arrived in town. I don't know where to go. And I don't have any family, and I'm just wondering if you have some food. I'm really hungry. <laughs> what would you have done? Well, the first thing, you know, this is a very dangerous life we live in, right? So my granny, for example, my granny, who's 93 years old, I'd be like, granny, don't open that door. People, you know, it's all kind of. Now me, me, I'm 52. I'm feeling a little bit more confident in my neighborhood. I would open the door. My wife's at home by herself. No, don't open that door. My mama, don't open that door, right? I mean, come on. Today's society, it's, all, it's a lot of wickedness out here. You can't be too careful out here, right? We're not talking about 2,000 years ago. We're talking about in a day and age where people will, people will do some wretched, ruthless, treacherous things for even when you're trying to do something good. All right, enough of that. Enough of that. Let's go on to verse 8. Let's go on to verse 8. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, I circled that, shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Whoo, shameless audacity. This makes me think that when I go before God, hmm, I, must, I must go bold, strong, humble, weak, useless and naked. I come in with the audacity of expecting something, even in a midnight prayer, even with nothing to offer but worship and thanksgiving. Lord, would you help me, please, God. It's, it's, a, it's a shameless boldness, right? It's, it's coming from a situation where, Lord, I need you to help. This concept is that the need or desperation of the need overrides my shame. Mm. Mm. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but have you ever been homeless? Have you ever had no food, no money, no job, and no prospect for the above? And you're just living from moment to moment, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day? That's shameless audacity is when you're asking somebody you don't know for a helping hand in 10 degree weather and you're freezing. That's shameless audacity. Hmm. This is how our prayer should be to God. Pray with shameless audacity. Lord, I need you. Lord, you are the only one who can help me. Lord, forgive me. I have sinned against you. Will you help me get out of this situation? God loves prayer that is persistent petitions. Mm. It's these casual requests they may not make it past the ceiling. <laughs> you know, it's these little humbug prayers, you know, that, uh, that, you know, like the angels, like they said in Lamentations, you put a cloud above us and we feel like our prayers aren't reaching you. I believe there's certain prayers that God would go to God that's just casual requests. They're not even going past the ceiling, right? Remember Job? Question God. Remember that? Job questioned God. And check out what happened next in Job 38, 1 and 2. Job 38, verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by my words without knowledge? Woo! Woo! How you going to come question me and you don't even know nothing about nothing? You know what I mean? That's like going to an electrician and say, well, uh, shouldn't that cap be over there on top of that thing right there? And the electrician looking at you like, huh? I thought you called me because you didn't know what to do. You messed it up even more. And now here you come asking me a question about something you don't even know about. You know what I mean? Verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> Let's move on. Here goes your ask. Uh, your ask, uh, A-S-K. -A Let's look at it. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The door will be open. Okay. The door will be open. Okay, good. Now, the friend asked. He sought. 
and he not. When we are in need of desire, make your request continual. Keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. If God has given you a vision and it requires money, ask God to assist you with your plan and show you who are your partners or investors. Then seek, knock without ceasing. <laughs> Isn't it good to know that God is always listening, brothers and sisters? Do you believe he is ready to answer our requests? Do you believe he loves to fulfill our requests? Yes, yes, and yes. God, God though, we got to be careful. God is not some wishing well where we haphazardly submit penny any requests. Wow, let me say that again. God is not a wishing well where we haphazardly submit penny any requests. God is to be respected and approach with reverence. Yes, we should always pray and pray continually. God is faithful to attend to our needs. Do you believe you should try to meet your needs without God's help? <laughs> Mr. Google, Mr. Google, uh, can you tell me how to lose weight? What? Well, you need to go to such and such and get on such and such a diet. You know, that's Mr. Google. Brothers and sisters, go to God. I am going to suggest that when, you, when folks come to you for aid and they ask, seek, or knock on your door, be careful. Be careful on how you respond because God may have sent them to you. Wow. wow. They may be God's servant sent there to help you. <laughs> you never know. Verses 11 and 12. I love this part. Which of you fathers? Wow, I just thought about this. There were fathers in this crowd. I don't remember a lot of the disciples. I don't remember too much talk about the sons, the disciples' sons or daughters. But this one, this just enlightened me. Which of you fathers? Now we know there was a big crowd around him, right? If your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Or if, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to who ask him, to those who ask him? Good, good. That was verse 13 too. Here Jesus uses another illustration to demonstrate that a real father uh, that is, a father with love for his children would, ignore, would not ignore the plea of his own seeds. Right? I mean, come on. A real father is going to listen to his children, right? And going to try to do everything he can to make their needs and a bunch of their desires come to fruition. Now, as we see Jesus making his teachings relatable to the times at hand. Now, in the desert, they certainly would know about scorpions, right? Now, this is what I'm suggesting. When I'm talking about making our conversation relatable, when we teach, make your lesson relatable to your audience. If you're teaching young people, right, teach, uh, ask, the, ask other young folks for assistance in your illustrations, you know? Find out who popular singers are. Find out who popular shows are, popular sayings. What are people, what are some of the uh, colloquialisms? What are some of the sayings that fads that people are saying? You know, catchphrases, what I'm trying to say. Uh, how do people wear their clothes? You know, find out some of the real popular things that the kids, are, the youth are enjoying today. And then you can interject that into some of your teaching. So that way you'll keep them captive. While you're teaching, then you can throw some of this in there to wake them up, you know, to kind of raise their level of attention back up, right? 
And then this is good for uh, adults and, and senior classes as well. Make it relatable. You know, if you don't know about agriculture because you're like me, you're born in the city and you're a city boy, the only time I went to the farm was to pick some blueberries or we went on vacation to visit mom and them down south, mama's and them, mom and them down south, you know, we saw a farm and saw some horses, some cows driving to the house, you know what I mean? I rode on a horse a couple times, that's all I know. So then, while I'm teaching the senior saints, and we have these lessons on agriculture, these parables that are related to agriculture. You better believe I went and asked some people that grew up in the South about farming. Yeah, because Jesus used that, right? So I asked about that. You know, when you talk about got your hands on the plow and not looking back because it might turn. Well, yeah, if you're not looking, you could hit a rock and mess up your plow. You could injure yourself. Right. You could spread them seeds over onto the wrong ground. Remember, Jesus talked about that. Spreading the seeds over here on the stony ground versus the ground that it's supposed to go into. OK, you know, make your lessons relatable. Now, Jesus used two unexpected illustrations to teach his audience about prayer and to capture their attention. Right. He talks about loaves of bread and he talks about scorpion eggs, you know. What good father, you know, when his kid asks for something, is going to give him a scorpion? Like, what? A scorpion? Yeah. Matter of fact, there's one right by your foot. Ah! Okay. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> That's the kind of crazy stuff I do in my Sunday school class. God is telling us to be consistent and persistent with our prayer lives. There is no shame in asking God for assistance when God is directing the plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. There is no shame in asking assistance when God is directing the plan. It is critical to let the Holy Spirit lead us. Amen. Amen. Somebody This concludes our lesson. I hope there was something said that can help you in your life and teach and in your teaching to your Sunday school students. I certainly really appreciate you tuning into our lesson. I want to say thank you to a New York Fried Chicken, one of our sponsors. And then also I want to say thank you to a, a super, oh boy, Great Giant Supermarket. There they go. Great Giant Supermarket. And always thank you to the Urban Youth tech lab. Uh, certainly, if you would like to contribute to our, uh, our ministry, God knows I would certainly appreciate it. Uh, we have four youth that we are teaching on the cameras and lightings and how to work the control boards, on set, off set, on location, off location. I mean, it's it's challenging sometimes, you know, and we provide them with pizza and sodas and we, do, you know, transport them and so forth and so on. Uh, I have people that have given me Bibles. I have a bag of socks and care packages, toothbrushes, soaps, all kinds of donations have been coming in. So I thank you for that. Please share this on your social media pages. I love you so much. Thank you for your support. God bless.